try to maybe wrap up. So I'm just gonna go through and fill in a few things I think might be missing. And maybe take out some things that are a little too much. I'm using this eyelid to kind of trim down the shape of the eye, which I think I made a little bit too large. At this point, I don't know if you can notice, but I keep stepping back, keep stepping back so that I can kind of see where I am, what I have, and what I need. So. We're gonna leave the face alone for a little bit. And we're gonna go back into the hair and try to pick up a little bit more of the details. So we're using this a little smaller brush than we did when we started the hair. And I know this is a dark value and I know this is last, not quite last. But along with respecting that process of going from light to dark, there's a little bit of uh, thinking about the time you have and where you should put your energy. So in the time we have, if someone were to yank this painting away from me, it's a little bit more important that Alicia look like Alicia than it is that her hair be exactly perfect. But now, that we have a little time, I'm gonna put a little bit more into the hair. Actually, I take that back. I'm gonna go a little bigger with the brush. You know, I've done some pretty large paintings and you know, people ask, well, how do you do a painting that big? And it's really simple, big painting, big brushes. So you always use the largest brush you can for the area that you're working on. And you know, if the painting is six feet tall or eight feet wide, well then maybe at that point you want to maybe run to Home Depot and get a big old house brush to start out when you put in your darks. You know, whatever it takes to get the painting done. Another thing that I find helpful when you're doing a painting is, you know, kind of getting a thought in your head that you stick with as you're working. So, you know, so that you can get the look to the painting that you're, that you're thinking about. So, you know, um, you know, I, a lot of times I'll put a sentence in my head. So, you know, so I'm trying not to make Alicia look, you know, older than she is, you know, even though I'm working in a, in probably a loose manner, which might lead to that. So I keep thinking to myself in my head, you know, Alicia is young and pretty. And I keep that phrase going in my head and it helps me to concentrate and to get the look that I'm going for in the painting. Oh, that was better the first one. Now she has highlights in her hair. I'm gonna put a few of them in, in certain choice places, not everywhere because because she has a lot of, she has color in her hair, really nice red. But what can happen is because it's there and it's strong, you can get kind of seduced by it and really do too much. And it'll start to take away 
from, from the rest of your painting. So I'm kind of choosing where all that's going to go. And I'm using, in order to get those highlights in, some of the colors of the skin tone so that they will relate. I'm also making sure that they are kind of in this area because those highlights are what tells us that this is where her head goes up, this is where her head goes over. So I'm really watching where I put them so that because putting them in the wrong place will tell us something about the form of her head, which is not true. You guys notice I'm not reaching for the highlights over here. At this point, we're trying to wrap up. So I'm really just working. Like if I go back to the face, it's probably going to be somewhere in there. So as I start working, you know, we're working on a larger, area, larger, area, larger area. And then we get back to the small area. Once I'm generally, once I'm done with the darks, I try not to go all the way back to the darks. And, do the you know work on them again and again and again once i'm done with the mids i try not to go back to the mids you know if i make a mistake or if i forget something then of course that's what needs to be done but that is not ideal i'm going to try to push this highlight on her cheek a little further So what we're doing at this stage is we're trying to continue to add to the painting, add to the painting, add to the painting. We're not repainting, we're kind of, we're adding. So I think now what we're gonna do is give the painting a little bit of a background. We'll use that background to trim up what's going on in the hair and uh, Maybe we'll even give her some shoulders. So shoulders first, and we're just gonna kind of draw them in a little bit. Again, I'm mixing in so that I have a nice array of color and no one color is wrong. We're gonna start out even with the shoulders, with the darks, with the darker values, put it that way. There are some areas where her shirt is, um, is showing through, and so we'll, we'll do a little bit of that too. Now at this point, we're not going to complete her shoulders, but what I'm doing is basically kind of designing a, a uh, what's that, a, like a pleasing shape for them. with just maybe, you know, two, three colors to kind of... And this, for me, is one of the most fun parts of the painting. Because I don't, you know, I don't do abstract paintings, but I do, I do love them. And this is my chance to kind of loosen up a little bit. I'm bringing these strokes kind of this way because her shoulders have that shape. Now over here, nice, clean, bright color to kind of finish off the shoulders. I think I'm going to add a little bit more skin tone in through here. 
loosely. Now I'm trying to get this last, I want to put a little bit of the skin tone in here, but I'm trying to make sure that it is right. Cause right now I have a lot of that, that pink going on from the, from the shirt. And this has to be kind of right and a little less colorful. Start with this, a little too bright. Maybe just a little bit of it right there. I don't think that that's too bad. It's not bad. Well, this is one of those cases where I wished I had mixed a little bit more color when I started because now I have to go back and kind of find it again. Now the background's going to be a little lighter on this side. These areas where the background color mixes in with maybe the color of her hair or something like that, they kind of help the painting to relate a little bit so that you don't just have this flat, flat background. Alicia, we are almost done. So I'm using the background to kind of clear up some of these curls and maybe help to put a couple in. Some places I'll put it in strong where I think it should be strong, maybe not that strong. There we go. And other places it'll kind of be a mix between the background color and the foreground color. couple more stray hairs and then we're out of here. These to me are kind of the fun part. You can't do too many or it'll look a little busy. So you know if it's busy to me, 
because I paint pretty busy paintings. Um, then there will probably be a decent issue with busyness. But we'll just get a couple in. There's a pretty good highlight up there on her hair that I think I need to get in. And a little bit of a green right in through here. There's our painting of Alicia.